I want to move now to looking at um, the exam in sections um, with some uh, particular strategies for each section. And so firstly we'll look at section one, rule one, source-based questions. Firstly, in part A, part A is where you have the, the multiple choice or the short answer. Um, with the multiple choice, um, the guide we have is the 2010 paper. That's the only HSC paper we have that shows what the multiple choice looks like and what the standard is. Um, my suggestion with only one paper to guide us is, is prepare for harder questions. Um, the questions were not especially difficult in the 2010 paper and my suggestion is that they can only get a little bit more challenging. Um, when you are doing multiple choice, use good multiple choice strategies. Make sure that you give good consideration to all alternatives um, and then choose the best answer to the question that's been asked. Um, when you move to the short answer, the written ones in this part A of the um, World War I, the, the golden rule, and I'll probably say this a number of times, is to make sure that you answer the question asked. Um, use all of the sources you are asked to use. So if the question is saying to you that you must use source A and B, then you ensure that you refer use both, both those sources. Um, often these questions will say use the sources and your own knowledge, and you must ensure that you do both. Um, and a technique for doing that is to make sure that you show where you've used the source. So when you're writing, you say from source A we learn, or in source A it describes, and then you go on to show how you've used that source. In other words, you're alerting the examiner to the fact that you are using the source. Um, anything that you use that is not in the source, that's assumed to be your knowledge. Um, as a guide to how long it will be, use the ruled space in the question paper. Um, and see the 2010 paper as a guide to that. I'd like to turn to an example now for the sort of question you might get in the short answer section of part A of the World War I question. So what we have here is a source, and the source label tells us that it's an extract from the memoirs of Crown Prince William of Hohenzollern. Um, it's a brief extract from something that he's written and it says on the evening of the 5th of November 1918 I came across a stationary leave train which was flying red flags. As I approached the train the men alighted, a sergeant and a group of men stood before me displaying a very insolent attitude. At this I reprimanded them and appealed to their sense of honour as German soldiers. Very quickly there was a change. A young soldier explained that they did not mean anything by their process, it was just that they had been travelling for three days without food. And the question is, um, using source A and your own knowledge, give three reasons why Germany was defeated in World War I. So if I was looking at this question and aiming to ensure that I got three marks, I would be saying that I have to use source A and my own knowledge, that I have to give three reasons, and that those three reasons have to explain why Germany was defeated in World War I. Now, if we turn to a, a, a sample answer, the answer, Germany was defeated in World War I because following the failure of the Ludendorff Offensive in early 1918, the German army had been pushed back by the Allied counteroffensive and was near defeat. Now, at this point, we haven't used the source. This is all our own knowledge, but it is one reason for Germany's defeat in World War I. The next sentence, as source A shows, and notice here that we are introducing the fact that we are using the source, we're taking this information from the source. This had contributed to a collapse of morale with some military units on the verge of mutiny. And the final sentence, at the same time, the German home front had collapsed and, as shown in source A, could no longer keep the army supplied with food. So the final one is a combination. It's bringing in your own knowledge about the home front, but it is also at the same time referring to the source. Um, now, th that response to that question is going to get three marks. Why? The source use is clearly indicated. The answer gives three clear and different reasons for Germany's defeat. Um, and notice that it's integrated, mixing the material and the sources. In other words, it starts to, the intention is to answer the question. So it starts with a, a sentence that then leads to the next one, leads to the next one, um, and ties it all in. All right, we move now to part B of the World War I question. And this is immediately meant to be harder, more challenging for you than the previous section. Um, a, couple of, a couple of points here that I think should guide you. This is the, the question here in your answer should be about the sources. 
about the sources themselves. So content is less important, not unimportant, but less important. Um, a big tip, read the source label. It can be very, very useful, and I want to demonstrate that in a moment. Um, write concisely, think more, write less. We are constantly told by the examination people that you can get full marks for this by simply using the space they provide in the exam booklet. It means you have to think out your answer and then write concisely. Um, do deal with what they ask you to deal with, which is perspective, usefulness and reliability. Um, don't quote the sources unless there is a good reason to quote the sources. Um, if you find yourself rewriting whole slabs of the sources, then you're probably not on the right track. Um, do deal with all the sources in the question. So if it's saying, asking you to deal with source D and source C, make sure you do deal with both of those. Um, do think of the key questions that you would have been taught in your source work in school. Who wrote it? When did they write it? What did they write? Why did they write? Who is the audience? What use? What's the tone? And so on. But make sure you answer the question asked in the exam paper. Um, use the scaffold that follows as a guide, and I'll, I'll suggest a scaffold approach to this in a moment. Again, make sure you're answering the question in the exam paper. Um, questions in um, question three in most of the papers prior to 2010 will be a good guide to the sort of question you're going to get in this section. Um, and the final point here, and it's a repetition notice, um, make sure you answer the question asked in the paper. All right, what I do want to um, suggest to you now is a scaffold that could be used in this section of the paper to think about it. Not that you would draw it up necessarily like this, but certainly think about it when you are um, approaching a section. And what I'm suggesting here is that if it's asking you about the perspective, reliability and usefulness to answer a particular historical question for two sources, C and D, then a little scaffold like this may be useful because what you find is if you can say something about the perspective of the source and something about its reliability, that can give you something to say about that source's usefulness in answering the question that you've been asked. Um, and what you should be able to do in, your, in a quick brainstorming session within the exam is look at source C and see if you can jot down some points about its perspective, something about its reliability, and then see if that can suggest something to you about how it can be used or the limitations to its usefulness and so on. And then same for source D. And what you may find is that some of the sources you may be able to put a lot down, some of the sources it's a bit more limited. Um, that doesn't matter and you don't have to deal absolutely evenly with both sources, but you do have to address the sources, uh, both the sources asked for in the question, and you do have to make some judgment about their usefulness based on their perspective and reliability. Now, if we are looking at this scaffold, what sort of things do you write about um, when you're thinking about the sources? Um, if we're talking about perspective, then we're talking about the time the source was written, the historical context. We're talking perhaps about the nationality of the, um, the author, the social class of the author, the proximity, I'll come back to that in a moment, the authority of the author, um, the power of the author. Um, just come back to nationality. I've got this one highlighted in red um, because students um, sometimes um, simplify what this, what this amounts to, and I suppose the commonest mistake is to identify something as coming from a German perspective and therefore to be unreliable. Um, the fact that, it, that you have ascertained that it's German does not therefore follow that it is unreliable. You need to justify such a statement. Um, the other one, proximity, what I mean there, probably most students will understand this, um, as is it primary or is it secondary? And once again, you must avoid a very simple response that says primary good, secondary not good. Um, you cannot say that. Um, a source may be primary and may be unreliable, a source may be secondary and may be very reliable and very useful. Um, you have to look at and, and, and the primary source and the secondary source and justify your judgment. Um, if we come to a reliability, once again, some authors, historians would be immediately suspicious of some authors. Um, the date at which something's written will affect its reliability. The purpose is the purpose to persuade, to propagandise, that that's going to affect its reliability. Um, the nature of the content, the tone of the content, is the tone perhaps propagandist? Is it reflective and private and perhaps more reliable? 
Um, and what is the intention with regard to an audience? In other words, there's a whole lot of questions you're prepared to ask yourself to assess perspective and reliability. Having considered those, you then come over here and consider the usefulness, and it's best not to hone in on one use, um, and you don't have to come to a judgment that says, oh, it's useful or it's not useful. Um, something like a piece of propaganda is a good example. A piece of propaganda may not be terribly useful for telling us what happened, but it may be quite useful um, for showing us how propaganda worked. Um, just remember that if we're talking about usefulness, you need to support your judgment by referring back to perspective and reliability. And I suppose finally on this section, which is probably one of the most challenging sections of the paper, you really are, are rewarded with marks if you can demonstrate some insight into source work, into the way historians use sources. Um, and therefore it's best not to obsess with the idea that there is um, there is a particular answer that we're looking for, is to show your awareness of how sources are used and your insight into the sources that you are presented with on the exam paper. All right, just to give one example here of how useful the source label can be. Um, the source label is put there with the sources in order to assist you. So the source label, and we've already seen this source earlier, but it says it's an extract from the memoirs of the German Crown Prince, William of Hohenzollern, published in 1922. During the war, the Crown Prince commanded an army on the Western Front. Now, if you're thinking of the sort of questions you might be asking yourself about the source that follows in relation to its perspective and reliability, well, suddenly um, the source label gives you a whole lot of information that's very useful. Um, for example, historians would be very suspicious about the truthfulness and reliability of memoirs. Um, the author was German, and of course will be expected to give a German perspective. Um, the author was the Kaiser's son and probably will be expected to give um, the German wartime government's view um, and is also likely to be embittered by the Kaiser's abdication. It was published in 1922 and in 1922 of course the German military were very much wedded to this idea of the stab in the back legend um, and refusing to accept the defeat. Um, and finally the, the the author was a senior general in the German army on the Western Front and is very likely to be making excuses and justifying his own role. So suddenly, just from looking at the source label, you have a whole lot of ammunition to help you talk about that source.